Thank you to our sponsor, Rocket Money. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash command. That's rocketmoney.com slash command, rocketmoney.com slash command. This hour is for me, though. Yes, it is. This, this Taking is care you. of this. this you know why? Here. And it makes you a better caretaker. That's true. When you fill the well. You have to fill the well. Yep. Somebody told me right. uh, once in therapy, we'll get to I'll get to it. <laughs> no, use it I'll on the show. I'll get to introducing use it. Use it on the show. I, I'm going to say one time in therapy, somebody told me, you know how the, like, the love languages or whatever, yep. oh, you have to, that fills up your love tank. And I was oh. like, no, no, no. <laughs> We're going to find a different term for that. They, um, the, the oxygen, put on your oxygen mask before you put on your other, you know, like that kind yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Second in Command. My name is Timothy Simons. My name is Matt Walsh. We are blessed. Yeah. Honored. A wonderful, legendary performer, actress, director. To be, and, ba- and second, and uh, second more important, in command? friend of the show. And s- Would friend- you say I am second in command to you guys? Sure. If you're first yeah. in command here? Sure. I, uh, yeah. I guess we are first in command. Of we are first in command, in command yeah. which really undercuts the premise of the show. Yeah. Have you guys had repeat guests? I know you've had part one and part two with big timers, uh-huh. right? Yes. We have had repeat guests. Tony has been in a few times. Julia. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. Arm. Julia. Reed, Arm. Maybe. They've all be, re, been couple. back? They've oh, done wow. a couple. They've done a couple. Okay. Yeah. Mandel's been on a few times. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, well, I feel really honored no sh- to join those ranks. Well, of this the... is Lennon Parm, if you don't recognize her vocal qualities, <laughs> or if you're if you're not watching the video. Yeah. This is the wonderful uh, friend of the show, Lennon Parm, and thank you for There's coming on. There's a YouTube on. aspect to this. Are you, do you know that website? Uh, familiar, okay. more familiar with YouTube Kids, though. Is, it, is this go- on YouTube Kids? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could edit out the swears. Okay. We've talked about this before, how important this rewatch of a rewatch is. This actually brings up a good thing that we had not considered. How are we going to bring the kids into this? Because this is as important to For them. them. Yeah. I don't think I would let my son listen to this in the way that I let him watch Minecraft you know, adults playing Minecraft. Right. Is there, are you worried that it might undercut your own parenting? That like we, I don't let him watch anything that I've ever been in because almost all of it has either dicks or cursing. uh And so you don't watch or you'll let your kids watch. I watch it. I watch it over and over and judge myself. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So you're able to watch stuff you've done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of people we've had on the show are like, can't watch it. I'm not a huge fan. I'll watch something once, but I won't go back generally no more than once no you don't like to feel proud of yourself i am proud of it <laughs> no i am proud of it yeah but i also get i'm afraid of being too critical or yeah. focusing on some yeah. flaw that i don't like and i don't want to go into that well, I, but I, with time i can watch things easier do you few think, years go by do you think that ultimately the the level of influence that we would have on your child might undercut your own authority in the house is that is do you think that that's underneath one of the reasons you wouldn't let him watch this not just the dicks and the farts and the you know and the pussies and the buttholes and that yeah Walsh doesn't like it when I go blue when you say the <laughs> word pussy yeah yeah nobody likes it when you well, say the word pussy let's well, the, be honest the doctor that's what the doctors the doctor say. does not call a vagina a pussy yeah, yeah. I would agree with Lennon here <laughs> I would agree with Lennon. I don't know. The last time I was at the doctor, he was like, you're being a fucking pussy. Oh, okay. Got <laughs> yeah. it. In that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I have had a doctor call me a fucking pussy, but <laughs> not as referring to my own vaginal canal, birth canal, vest- vestibule, vulva, yeah. et cetera, as a pussy. Your labia. <laughs> yeah. That would be it. inappropriate. Yeah. I don't, tell me if I did the right thing. I went to go see Barbie. That's not the question. I know I did the right thing by going to see oh, Barbie. Oh, yeah. Were you wearing a pink jumpsuit? or? I wasn't, but it was fun. Were you yeah. being a pussy? I was I was a pussy okay. about wearing the pink jumpsuit. Everybody there was having a great time. I brought uh, my son, uh, my kid Hopper, and Hopper's really good friend. Mm-hmm. And so it's like the four of us going to see like an afternoon show. And like the last spoiler, the last line of the movie is yeah. I'm here to see my gynecologist. It's a really funny joke. Yeah. Great way for the movie to go out. 
turns, everybody's 10, 11 years old, turns, looks dead eye contact, like, what's a gynecologist? Okay. And I was like, and okay. This is not your child. Not my child. A separate child. A separate child. Okay. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. That's a fair question. I'm going to answer this question in the best way that I know how. How old? 11. 11. Okay. So, you know, around the time. Did you yeah. say pussy doctor? Yeah, I was like, yeah, you know what your <laughs> pussy is? It's the doctor you go see specifically for a pussy. And I like said it really loud during oh, the credits. Oh, yeah. Awesome. But like, <laughs> but, but I was like, one thing that's going to happen. And I was like, all right, Hopper, Hopper's going to become interested in this because Hopper's going to be like, okay, I, you know, a gynecologist, all right, this is about like, you know, women, w like women stuff. I'm mm -hmm, going to like, mm -hmm. I'm going to clue in. Yeah. And then what I'm going to be able to do is like slowly shift eye contact from a to my own daughter mm -hmm. and then be like, and then I'm having the conversation with my kid, but a is still going to get the information. Yeah. But uh, but Hopper did me no such favors. Mm. Hopper was like, well, no, no, no. never. And then mm -hmm. there I was just having the full conversations about what gynecologists do with the kids that are not my own. Do you think that did I that made the right choice? Did that come back to you? On, I mean, did it come back on you? Did you get like a weird call from a parent? I didn't. Yeah. Do you it's think I did the right up. thing? I think if you spoke of it professionally and clinically, I think that's a very fair question. It's not, yeah. there's nothing bad in it. Clinically, like I was like, look, whatever, the opposite of your bussy, which is your butt pussy, mm. they work on- Below your fupa. Below your fupa. Yeah. And your taint. And your taint, sort <laughs> of like- Above your taint. Right, <laughs> right above <laughs> the taint, right below the fupa is the opposite end of your butt pussy. And that, and so yes, I mean like, and I, I think ultimately I- I can't am, believe that didn't come back on you. <laughs> I embodied the yeah. lessons of the movie Barbie. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean l listen, if you were a single dad <laughs> and <laughs> and and your daughter's friend like w also had a single dad and neither one of you had ever had a conversation <laughs> with your child about puberty or anything like that, then yeah, you made the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, <laughs> Likely in that conversation, if if one of sir, if one of my daughter's friends asked me something l along those lines, and I wasn't sure where she was developmentally or where she was informationally, right. I would say, you know, that's something that you should really ask your mom or dad about because I'm not sure how they would want me to answer that, and I might give you too too much information. Yeah. you know. Yeah, right. It's like saying, "Is there a Santa Claus?" Right. Yeah. Are you right? Are you the right person it's to go down that hole? For every fan, like every time we learn something new in our household, like my son has been <laughs> asking me all kinds. Today was like, "What's Armageddon?" Mm -hmm. He did out ask what was a movie with a great Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. <laughs> What's the Devil's Hour? Um, what is the Devil's Hour? I think it's midnight, but uh, okay. some people also say three a.m. Okay. Oh, okay. What's happening at 3 a.m. that makes it the devil? Nothing hour? good is my guess. Oh, yeah. They always say nothing happens. At, nothing good <laughs> happens at mid after midnight. Okay. So we talk about it, things, and then I have to button the whole conversation with, "Hey, this is not your job now to inform your friends all of these what what the word shit means, right? Mm -hmm. That is something you can only say with us in this space right now, and you cannot go tell all your friends that word or what it means, and uh." Just so you know, like that's their family's job to okay. explain that when they're ready for that. Our kids have gotten into the thing where I think Jude started when he was eight. He's like, when I'm nine, can I say ass? Like they want, <laughs> they set these permissions and all of a sudden yeah. it's been codified. I couldn't even tell oh, you. Yeah. I'm like, Cece's like, I'm going to turn 12 dad and I get to say the D word, damn or whatever. And I'm like, which is so great because it's a negotiation that. I was never going to put in place. Yeah. And they're being polite about it. It's like, it's fantastic. And, and we just stumbled into it. I don't think, I know Morgan or I didn't set it up. Yeah. It just started with Jude and then Emmy. Yeah. And the F word, well, I think, is still when they off limits. Ask it, it's like, because we've been saying forever, you can have a cell phone when you get to middle school, right? Which yeah. is like, because in one, in first grade. Ours is when you turn 12. I don't know how, I think because the first child got it, which is right around yeah. middle school. Yeah. yeah. But then all of a sudden, like, 
mid, and it feels so far away yeah, then, yeah, but yeah. then all of a sudden. Well, middle school in California starts in sixth grade, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. Not seventh grade. And that's the thing, but it's like that gets imprinted in their little brains, yeah, yeah. and then oh, they're yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah, no, like you said. You said, and, like, and yeah. I've been counting on it for six years. For six years. Or I've been building Well, that's like getting years. your license these days. Getting your first smartphone is like driving a car. It's yeah. Like, it's freedom, yeah. and they look forward to it, and it's connection. Mm -hmm. For those of you just tuning in, Tim and uh, I have pivoted second in command. Lennon, yes. you were part of this pivot. Yeah. We decided because our show, our rewatch changed the game of rewatch podcasts. We yeah. know that. Mm. The word was out on the street. And so we thought it'd be worthy, much like the original show, we started rewatching Veep, an important show. Our mm -hmm. rewatch well, is an that. important, yeah. And you agree that this is an important rewatch podcast. We are now rewatching the rewatch. Mm -hmm. Well, you said it. By really? joining us, no, here. but I I like you guys a lot. That's oh, okay. it. Okay, okay. But well, I think there's yeah. something inherent being said by like you know participation. Well, like we don't need your opinion of the show because okay, we have yeah. fans who have written yeah. oh, reviews of the show. Yeah. This is hear. this was pulled. We have we're averaging like a four point nine review out of like four hundred some odd reviews, which but, is okay, crazy whole, unheard of for the whole series. Every single one of them, yeah. Every yeah. single one of the rewatch reviews, we're averaging four point nine out of five. Which again, no one's done, and no one will probably. It's like when Jordan was averaging 30 points a game and 20 rebounds or whatever. You know? Yeah, back in the classic Jordan days. Yeah, in the high, yeah. high Jordan era. So this is, I don't know who it's from, but I love all the insights from the behind the scenes y'all and the guests have on. Y'all point things out. Does that mean she's Southern? She's You're, Southern. Okay. Y'all yeah. point things out I never noticed that make me appreciate this top tier show oh. even more. Yeah, you said that. P.S. This is a five-star review, but the app is being weird, so I'm not sure how many I've actually highlighted. Just know that if this says one star, then in my heart, you are five stars. <laughs> this is something I would write, because I always struggle with technology. And like, please understand, I don't mean anything bad. I think I did this right. I end so many things with... Or I she think didn't like want to mess up her feed by putting five stars on this, because then it would start re recommending all these political podcasts or something. I think yeah. she sincerely... Oh, you said she? Well, you said she. I Did went I off for she? she. No, you said she. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Uh, why would I assume that? Interesting. I think because of y'all. Because y'all? I don't Girls, think Girls, women are more likely to use I that? I doubt that. I don't know. I feel like in your in your mind's eye, it's a woman saying y'all, but I feel like in the South, I have heard. It's sort of like. Oh, men would say it, but I don't it. see them typing Writing it out. It? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. This would be a good detective moment. Not to moment. gender it, but. We should, no. To have someone detective this and decide the gender from those, like the wording and phrasing. Anyways, just one of many of the 400 amazing mm. reviews. I mean, there's so I have, many. I have, have another, have I have another one, too. Please. It just, it kind of popped up. I'm not They're looking. so easy to find. I mean, God, it's like. Uh, this yeah, is on your po Apple Podcast page. Oh yeah, yeah but yeah. Also anybody on this, can review it. Anybody yeah. can review it, and okay. like, and they just happen. And mm -hmm. there are so many of them. Wow. I'm very picky with my rewatch podcast. There are so few good ones, hmm. but so far this is one of the good ones. Nice. I mean, in episode zero, they talk to a memory expert to see how accurate they will be in their recollections about the show. It's clear they do their research. And I like how they talk about the show in the context Whatever. of today's political climate. Oh. That's a real I mean, idea. it's real. It's real. Yeah. C congratulations. Thank you. You guys. You mentioned that anyone could write in on the, the you know, the review section. Yeah. And so I just popped in and mm -hmm. I wanted to see. And I have a little bit of an update. Oh, someone, nice. This is what someone wrote. Oh, great. Okay. Um, too much random guest talk. Not enough episode breakdown. Okay. Oh. A little too scattered and unprepared overall. So maybe you guys have, maybe you started strong with the memory ex expert and then you just kind of been phoning it in lately. That also could just be a statistical anomaly. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know that. I that know they're updating like a, 4 .9 I know they're updating though. a positive post and maybe they yeah. turned, but we also don't know what happened in that person's yeah. personal life. I, yeah, it's, they could have witnessed a car crash that morning or something. And like I stopped to and just to do a review. Like, I want to make somebody feel as bad as I feel right now. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I have to get rid of this gray ghost that's encompassing oh, me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, sitting it, on my chest. Yeah, yeah. I can't breathe. Yeah. I'll take it out on the random people 
who make podcasts. It wouldn't be random. It sounds like they chose. Well, they you. updated an uh, they earlier opinion. A, oh, okay. Yeah. You know. I just kind of feel like if somebody's like standing on top of like the wreckage of their own life and they're lashing out at a podcast that they used to like, that's way less about us and much more about them not being happy. Kind of where their, they are. Yeah, with their divorce. And I'm sorry that yeah. it didn't work out with you and Jacob. You know. Yeah. Oh, and so we're assuming that this is also a woman or a man in a relationship with a man named Jacob. I guess in my mind's eye, it was a woman. Yeah. I don't know what that says about me. That's something I'm going to have to examine. We are going to be going back to uh, the Pete Groats episode, uh, Chung. Chung. Uh, episode 104. Uh, how has your life changed since being a part of Second in Command? This is your second time. Yeah. Probably five months since we last saw you. What... How, how has your life changed in well, the last five months? There's been a, a big writer's strike. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I haven't had as much work, so I'm saying yes to more podcasts. Uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it. Okay, that feels, feels a little bit like a slight, but I guess like uh, maybe I'm just not going to take it that way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think you would have done it anyways, <laughs> whether you had a lot of free time or not. I think you had my a great suspicion. Time. Yeah, I, I think you would have made of, time. Um, Dancing with the Stars, though. I know. Are we allowed you to talk nice. about that? Yeah, we can. You were so good. I Did you watch? It? You're a dancer. No, I'm a mover. <laughs> well, you do funny <laughs> movement. I've seen you in com comedic well, things. Well, first of all, Coco. Okay, so she's the best. Matt was on Dancing with the Stars. I watched and, it, and um. People are outraged because there was not enough time for, to vote for you. I know, because the West Coast doesn't have... Because of the way... Literally, I'll show you. I screenshot it. I, I, I went to vote for you, and it was like voting is closed. And I was like, I did it the minute I saw your reel. I know. Unacceptable. They closed the voting before the, the last two couples or whatever. Wait, what? Well, it sounds like it, because she did it right when my reel plays. That's right before I go on. Yeah. So. And also Outrageous. the West Coast doesn't air live, so anybody right. watching it. Which is like half the country. Yeah. yeah. It's not a great setup. Because they want to announce the, the results live that right. week. They used to do it the next week. You would have to come back and dance. And then at the end of the second episode, you would find out who had lost from the week before. And even if they had a good dance, it didn't matter. So I guess that felt bad to people. Yeah, I think okay. it was the first time they had 14 couples. Uh -huh. It was lot. the longest show ever. It's a lot. And it was also the first time I think they had an elimination in the first week. So it was kind of like an, a downer to do that. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, we watched it and I just thought that your entire thing was like, this is such a dumb term, but I do mean this like from my heart. It was such a winning performance. You yeah, know what I mean, you. like your whole thing, your whole little lead up was so funny. It was like an honest and wonderful. It, it wasn't like you were like pushing really for good bits. energy, really good energy, really funny. You were having a good time. And like what the spirit of the show is about yes. to me. Right. Yeah. And Coco, first of all, I, I fangirl over her because I watched her on. So you think you can dance. And yep. she that's where she met her husband. Yes. And I watched them fall in love on that show. Do you know what her fiance's name is? Kiki. Kiki. And her name is Coco? Coco. Wait. Yeah, she... he's a ballroom dancer as well. Okay. She's stunning. They yeah. did a samba. I'm telling you, in, in their you season it. of So You Think You Can Dance, they did a samba, and I forget what the, the song was, but I watched them. I was like, these two people are in love with each other because of the way that they dance together. And but, also, they're equally matched. They're very strong together. Yeah. yeah. But just right. for somebody that is not familiar with dance in general, yeah. neither one of these people is the gorilla that knows sign language. I don't know what that is. Coco. Coco right? the gorilla. Yeah. Who knows oh. sign language. Who yeah. I think Neither one is that thing okay. or that animal. That's a really helpful observation. Just going to make a note. That's uh, a super helpful edit. observation. That's how why people come to the rewatch. That how upset Lennon was gorilla still alive? Coco has passed, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, okay. That's not a current reference. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Lennon just And by the out. way, Val. <laughs> I was so confused. And also... 
comparing this this like woman who like has a singular talent <laughs> because also the other thing about Coco is so Dancing with the Stars is about ballroom dance, right? Uh-huh. And so they feature ballroom dance styles. And ballroom dance is like the hardest dance that you could ever possibly do. Now, Coco it was trained, I think, in contemporary or ballet. jazz, ballet. Ch- so no she comes ballroom. in, no ballroom training at all. And not everybody can do this. Knocked it out of the goddamn park. So then she gets a job on Dancing with the Stars, which is for ballroom dancers, which yeah. is like, it's just, it's such hard work. Yeah, Were you it so is. tired? Were you? It was so hard. So hard. It was so hard. Yeah. It was really hard in boot camp. And I was going to share that Val, their choreographer, who was also a dancer on the Dancing with the Stars. <clears throat> yeah. He was their choreographer, and in their tango, he choreographed for them to kiss, and that's what started <gasps> their it sort started of like it. curiosity about we'll like, hey, go what's going on that. here? So it's kind of a neat story they have. And you meet him, Val. No. Oh, who? Kiki. Kiki. Yeah, yeah. He actually came in a couple times yeah. and just sort of helped, like, because he embodied the, the male side of the dance, if you will, or whatever the term is, mm-hmm. but the lead side. He was like the assistant that demoed it at the beginning. Yeah, and he yeah. also knows it, so he was like, he had a different kind of take. Like, Coco's yeah. a great teacher, but he, you know, just having a, someone else. Anyways, long story short, yeah. he was super helpful as well and, a, and a lovely person. Okay, what I guess I just want yeah, to go back was. to Lennon's disappointment for one second. <laughs> yeah. Just to say, in my defense, their names are Coco and Kiki. And I think that even though it is a dated reference, I think there mm-hmm. is a natural leap to being like, I didn't really remember if the gorilla's name was Coco or Kiki, but it's I'm pretty sure it was one of them. I and, don't accept any of okay. this. All right. I have a, okay. a thing I'd like to try. Um, so, so, so just real quick, I'm sorry. Thus is it far, about the monkey or the gorilla? It's not about the monkey. I okay. just want to say uh, Lenin has uh, currently blamed us for the writer's strike uh, because <laughs> I, I, didn't I asked that. how her life had changed and she was like, well, there's a writer's strike. So it was like a, a, yeah. a direct. Well, you like, said it was five months ago, which is literally the amount of time that we were on strike. I'm not making the leaps. You're the one making the leaps. I'm and I'm not defensive. You're defensive. And... <sighs> Okay, I don't have so anything I'm sorry. to be defensive I, for. I, <laughs> I'm sorry, Walsh. Please continue. I don't have to take your side because you're a strong person, but it's there's some weird <laughs> there's some weirdness coming across the table. Thank so, you. And I sort of apologize. Thank you. Anyways, he, just, he was just pissed off. I was so being so nice to you for so long. He's envious. He wishes he could dance like a star. <laughs> <laughs> um. So in the uh, fantastic rewatch episode we rewatched, there was some talk about Pete Groats's name and the spelling, et cetera. So I thought... You guys, there's no T. I know there isn't. There is no T there in isn't. Pete there Groats's isn't? name. No. No. And you put it in the email even that you sent to me. <laughs> there isn't. <laughs> there's no T. That's Tim. Tim carries even that in. at the in. end of this episode rewatch of the rewatch... Even at the end of that episode, you you guys did like. Well, I don't supervise that. <laughs> you came back and you said, "I just want to." I was too hard on you about Pete Groats, and then you said, "It is. It has a T." Like even on the <laughs> there's, there's no in the in the walkbacks. In the walkbacks, <laughs> you doubled down. <laughs> that there is a T. That there is a T, and you've said it. You said it even earlier today when today, you were saying the. It's Pete Gross. Stop Pete it. Gro- Pete Gross. Can you say it? Pete, Pete Gross. It, Pete yes. Gross? Pete Gross. G-R-O-S-C-Z. Is that just right? One <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just one Z. S-Z. S-Z. Sorry. No C. Yeah. I've never had a T in C-Z. There might not be a T, but there's like an emotional truth to there being a T in it. <laughs> Anyways. Not like a cross. Off like of Pete <laughs> Gross is the Jesus of this podcast. Off of the misspelling, yeah, the crucifix, the yeah. inherent misspelling that Tim imagines in that okay, name. Sorry, mm-hmm. that's okay. I thought I would introduce a game, and I looked up the top twenty-five most mm-hmm. commonly misspelled words. So I'm going to let okay. Lennon, Ooh, the first person this. to spell three words correctly, wins okay. the game. So okay. Lennon, I'm going to give you the, I'm going to give you a word, and yeah. you can say pass and make okay. Tim spell it, or you can choose to spell it yourself. Okay, are you ready? Uh huh. All right, bizarre. B i z a r r e. That's one. Okay. Well, you got that right? Yeah. No, there are two Z's in it. No, there no, aren't. There, there are, are not. not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to double check that. Uh, Tim, I'll go to you. Okay. Unnecessary. You can choose to spell it or throw it at Lennon. 
No, I'm just going to choose to do. I'm going to be brave. U N N E S. I'm going to go buzzer. No. S S A R Y. There's no S there. There's no S. Yeah, yeah, that's U N N E C E S S A R Y. I think I would have gotten there. Well, you got to do it in a game show format. You can't give the wrong answer and then go, oh, wait. I will get there. I would just like, uh, Aaron, if we could roll back the tape, was I given any of that information? Right. So, Le okay. Lennon. Mm -hmm. Committee. C-O-M-M-I-T-T-E-E. -E. That's two. Jesus Christ. Okay. You're getting so, lapped. currently, I just want to double check. I'm getting lapped. Currently has Len Lennon as two, and I have zero. Or there's a there's like... No, zero. Okay. Go. <laughs> I don't know. It feels like if we went to the judges. All right. Tim. Okay. Diarrhea. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of waiting it a little bit. You, yo, yeah, you think? A little bit. Uh, diarrhea. Because this one's a hard one for me. Yeah. D I H. Stop there. Hey. You're wrong. <laughs> You're already wrong. Here's the thing spelling has never been like I'm actually sweating a little oh, bit. Oh, spelling is, I don't want to make No, you no, no. This is great. This okay. is great. I just want to say okay, so I just want to double check my math again here. So Lennon still currently has two and I have like zero. one hat. Zero. zero. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So don't put any tally marks, okay? Okay. okay. Uh, Lennon. Yes. Independent. Independent. That's just a regular word. You want to take it then? Yeah, take it. Go oh. ahead. Go ahead, cocky mofo. <laughs> Mr. Cocky mofo. Independent. I I N D E P D E P E N D E N T. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All right, we're going to give him one. Thank She's you. still winning 2 to 1. Okay. <laughs> So I'll give you the option, Tim, to go next, mm -hmm. since Lennon con kindly let you go next. Okay. Uh, conscience. Pass. C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-C-E. -E -E. That's a win. Fucking hell. She won. Were you good at spelling tests, like as a kid, or like a spelling bees and everything? I was. I. I also would have gotten a couple of those wrong. Those are those are hard. You went. To, These those are, are commonly, the most commonly like twenty five. Yeah, top twenty five. Yeah. And I just picked a few. I got the word goatee in my spelling bee, and I had I didn't know what that was. Uh -huh. I had no idea what it was, and I spelled it phonetically. Without you got the, it right. I got it wrong. Is so it G O A T E E? It, yeah. Okay. I Do spelled T I E, and I was so I was so angry. Oh. That seems like an unfair word. I did just in my mind picture you turning to an adult <laughs> that's not your parent saying, "What's a goatee?" And yeah. having, I mean, yeah. like, goatees are rough. Like you should ask your mother. Yeah, I think you should the ask your mother should say what that a goatee that point. is. Ask your ask your mom to talk to you about that <laughs> yeah. about what a goatee is. You know, here's the thing. <laughs> it's like uh, 23 inches above your fupa. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably keep it that far from your pussy for as long as possible. If you have no idea just how much you're spending each month, you need Rocket Money. It's this great app that tracks all of your expenses so you know exactly where your money is going. Tim, I got a question for you. Yeah. What percentage of Americans have subscriptions they've forgotten about? Uh, what percentage of Americans? Yeah. Uh, 20%. 80% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about it. Think what? about that. I know I have to do this and I'm going to get Rocket Money. I really have to get rid of stuff that I'm not using. So. I'm a big fan of Rocket Money. This seems to be perfect for the scatterbrained. If you're out there and you're scatterbrained, this is perfect ADD, for you. ADD, ADHD. Yes. You know, any up. sort of neurodivergence. Yes. Uh, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash command that's rocketmoney.com slash command rocketmoney.com slash command <laughs> your pussy bussy y'all can i get a definition pussy. please y'all's pussy <laughs> oh god this how's y'all's pussy <laughs> <laughs> southern gynecologist y'all's pussy doing okay <laughs> y'all <laughs> Last um, time you were do here. you have uh, a subject um, matter or question to share? Um, early in this podcast rewatch, 
podcast, um, re-listen to this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tam, you mentioned you you used the phrase "young drunk" in Chicago, and I just I wanted to know more about that. Oof. I wanted to know <laughs> what that, that what that looked like. Oof. How old were you? Like, what it, Good was it every night? Where, 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 what? How did that manifest? It manifested itself, and I'll. I, my mom, I don't. My parents don't worry about me because I think I've gotten far enough in life. I think they would have worried about me at the time. Yeah. I think what it is is it's. It wasn't. It's never been full on alcoholism, but there is a sort of certain Chicago twenty three to twenty four year old drunk. Yeah. That is like I, I just feel like everything in the city and I love Chicago everything in the city when you're that age revolves around drinking yeah mm-hmm. and when it's nine months of winter <clears throat> yeah that's not like great yeah but I would just uh, there was like there was uh, we talked with Owen Burke about this there was never an off switch to it but there was also almost never any consequence so it was like I would work all day on Tuesday like go to a rock show and do tequila shots because bars didn't close until four. Right. I would five on Saturdays. Five on Saturdays. Wow. So I would stay. You would like stay Orleans, out until yeah. like four o'clock a.m. into Wednesday morning. Go home, get an hour and a half of sleep, and Jesus. then I would go back to work. And it was just like. What was your job at the time? I was a scenic carpenter. <laughs> I, like with I, like like axes and stuff. Yes. Like with saws, like, with band like, saws. Yes. Yes. And like, I I mean, if you can picture and also we were working in a place that didn't have heat and it was in the winter. So Mm. we had like welded together like this heat exchanger that involved like an actual wood burning fireplace. Yeah. And it was so dumb. There was like uh, carbon monoxide everywhere. Uh, But not only that, we were burning wood that had that was like wood that was treated. I think it was like chemically treated so that it wouldn't something. I can't remember what it was called. But if you burn it, it releases cyanide. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like we would burn that. (laughs) Yeah. And then also we were definitely like the fucking idiots that were like, you know, nail guns. They have the little safety. Yeah. Yeah. So you just pull the safety back and then you can just go like pop, 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 like into the wall on 45 minutes of sleep. The drunkest you've ever been been yeah. was three hours ago. It was just like this no off switch. Ay, ay, ay. I know it was not it's it not was, like a Simon and Garfunkel song. <laughs> this is no. like a different. No. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I don't well, know what like you mean young, by that. Like Young Drunk in Chicago. It sounds like. Romantic. Yeah, it's yeah, like, you yeah, know, oh, you know. I'm, the, I'm the only living boy in New <laughs> yeah, York. Yeah. It's yeah. not that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It was just ugly, but not like in a life altering or life-threatening way just in ways that i was like i'm not i'm not making good choices for me or my health or or like moving forward in life what what changed that honestly what changed it was going back to chicago to work on a job there was a show that was like an improvised dramedy called easy did you ever do that show Mm -hmm. um director named joe swanberg would do it and was like anthology like every show was like its own thing you showed up on sunday And you had like the outline that he had written and like everybody would talk about it and you would talk about character and what was going to happen. And then you would like go meet with the costume designer. You'd talk with them. Like it was a really collaborative sort of fun way to work. Yeah. And but we were shooting splits and which meant that we could like go out after work and everybody that was doing the episode was sort of like really fun. And I was back in Chicago. So I was like seeing some old friends or whatever. And every night we would go out until three, like, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. to like California Cutter was, is that what it was called? I there don't was know, that, was that a bar? There was a bar that was like over on Milwaukee <clears throat> and it was a 4 a.m. bar. And on Thursday night, we all stayed out so late and got so drunk that I was in the lobby of the hotel waiting to get picked up the next morning. And like, this is pretty embarrassing. I was like, I don't, I'm not gonna be able to make this van ride unless I go upstairs and make myself throw up. Like yeah. it was that bad and I had to and again, but I was like, you're a fucking 40 year old man mm. with two children mm-hmm. under your care mm. and you can't prevent yourself from getting into this kind of situation. It was, yeah. it was, that's the kind of like young Chicago drunk that I was. That's like a cultural thing, though. It felt yes. it's yes. not wasn't just you doing it that way. 
it was cultural, but I also do recognize yeah. behaviors in myself that took it beyond cultural, if that makes any sense. Right. But a city that says we're going to stay open till, f I mean, New York was like that. We were open till yeah. 4 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like McManus and yeah. places like that. Yeah. But I think by the time I got to New York, I had sort of learned to get home at around two. I wasn't yeah. the four o'clock. Yeah. I had a healthy life of drinking. Uh, in New York, but I wasn't the Chicago version of mm -hmm. it. And so, but the thing that touched on that for my Chicago era is like, it is cultural and it's this inescapable thing. That's what's tragic or a bummer about it is like, yeah. you're going to a four o'clock bar and then the move is because it is particular in the acting scene and the comedy scene. Yeah. It, everyone's in for it. Everyone's doing it. So you're yeah. sort of surrounded by it, peer pressure, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Then the move is to go to this after hours bar, which is so depressing and you're already too tipsy and then you're just waiting in line to get like one more beer and then the yeah. lights come up and it's like, why? They're and you can't sometimes break that habit and it's like, why? Why did we go out to Ashland for like one more beer in a cold sort of legal bar? It's yeah. like that's the depresso moment. And, like, we, and there were no consequences because I was single, no children, roommates, but I wasn't like, no one was yeah. counting on me. Yeah. In the winter, you would drink because you were depressed. And in the summer, you would drink because you were happy. Because it was like, oh my God, like yeah. we, here are the, th like we get three months of the, the most celebration. beautiful the yeah. celebration. Like every, we're all just going to quit our jobs and go to the lakeside. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. Let's go ride bikes. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. And mm. I... We had a friend who now lives in L.A. who was a bartender at Danny's over in uh, in Wicker Park or in Bucktown. Sure. And that was a 4 a.m., 5 a.m. on Saturday's place because he was an actor. I mean, like, we would all go there because he never charged us. So we were all broke. Right, and it was right. like that, like that uh, hoarder mentality of, like, I'm never going to have, I'm never going to be able to afford these things or to be able to buy these things. So I have to accept them when they are given. Yeah. yeah. So he would just, like, come out with beers and shots and be like, I have to do this because yeah. I'm never going to get free booze again. And then the weed muffin lady would come through and she would sell, <laughs> like, weed muffins. And then, all, yes, but then the lights would come on. I don't know. Like, that's young Chicago drunk to me. Do you have like a young? Did Lenny? you have a young Evansville party? <clears throat> no, rage? well, I guess yeah. I mean, I was such a, I was so freaked out about ever being out of control that I did not get drunk until I went to England to study abroad, and I, it was legal for me to drink. So, uh -huh. so I drank like two ciders and was wasted. How old were you at that age? Twenty. Wow. Twenty. Okay. And so then I came back to Evansville with a little like, more open yeah a little more like okay maybe it's okay for me to do this I think I can do it and have a good time and not feel crazy or but it was like wine coolers and stuff do you, you know what like, I mean do yeah. you feel like those people that came when you came back that they were like oh Lennon's a little more cultured she's like you know she's got sort of Euro a European flair even though it was the UK <laughs> I do, do think, think I will say this is such a weird thing to say but Perfect. I will say when I was in the United Kingdom, there was a different quality of the way men looked at me mm -hmm. that made me feel uh, in my own body very different. So when I came back, like I was getting a lot of attention from the British crowd. Okay. <laughs> oh. I don't know. So what, a positive? This I don't know. Is, uh, like I'm that type or something. Got okay. it. I mean, those, that's where my ancestors are from. Maybe they were like, yes, I don't know. But I, there was, uh, there was a gardener at, that we called Wavy Dave. <laughs> because <laughs> he waved at us every time we drove by. Um, and you know, he like said one, two, three, you know, like that kind of thing. And uh, I was just like, he's so handsome. He works in the gardens. Like, and he would just like look me up and down every time I go by. And I'd be like, I mean, I, that just had never happened to me before. I was that age. I think I just looked like too much of a girl. Yeah. And you were, you probably had an outside mismatched energy or something than yeah. the typical 
London? Were you in London or whatever? We were we were like an hour by train yeah. north of London. Yeah. So you probably felt foreign in some way. Or yeah, different. I'm sure there you was something. Off that. Yeah. yeah. That so, the air difference or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was this a positive? And did you bring back a confidence? Did you ever see that? I think I did. Yeah. I think I I think I did come back with like kind of more comfortable in my own skin in that way for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like pouring a little wine cooler into a glass. You kind of like have, you're kind of gesturing. <laughs> with it and you're like I'm hot as fuck like confirmed I did hot have as one fuck week, okay so I did have one week where three guys asked me out at once whoa and that was like at once again, like they all just no, boom. <laughs> you know what I mean like within one week there were three guys that they all asked me out and I was like oh my god you're like I was it. I was yeah, it felt like are. it felt like what happened I'm coming online or whatever you know you also might have been Feeling different mm -hmm. about yourself before that attention came your way, too. Because totally. being in a foreign land totally. frees you up or gives you a different kind of freedom or s intelligence almost. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, now I've, like, both. experienced some level of independence and life and, like, yeah. being on a dance floor, yeah. like, with all, you know. A movement floor? A movement floor, yes. Yes. Um. Yeah, but I there was one one night that in New York, so I waited I waited tables. I didn't bartend, but it was always at a place like a dive bar that yeah. I waited tables, and I waited tables for years at a place called the Bull Moose Saloon. Yes, you've talked. Yeah, yeah and then um, I also waited tables at a wine bar called Divine Bar, and one night we went out after our shift uh, to the China Club. Do you, yeah, are you I know where the China Club was. I know where it was. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we went um, and got in like a cor cordoned off area and we closed that place down. And I had shots and was just not used to drinking that way. And then took a cab home at whatever fuck time it was, 5 a.m. or something. Mm -hmm. And so my husband... I don't think we were married yet, but we were living together. Was he one of the three people? He was not. He was not. Okay. He was not in England. <clears throat> um, no, he wasn't okay. in England, and he wasn't uh, working with me at the bar, so he did not go out. Okay. Um, he, oh, I'm sorry. A, I think I meant, was he one of those three people that asked you out that one week? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry. No. He. Um, I didn't meet him until I moved to New York. Okay. So uh, I got home. He's a school teacher. So he's in the bathroom. He has woken up for his day. And he's like shaving and I come in our like railroad hallway and I'm like pinballing down like so drunk that I'm like ricocheting off the walls and the look on his face was way worse than the look I gave you when you talked about Coco the gorilla okay <laughs> he was so disappointed mm. in me mm. <laughs> and I was like never again will I will I do that mm-hmm I knew when it was happening, it felt like, because it wasn't, we just didn't, we closed China bar, China, whatever down. And then we went back to divine bar, which was closed. The porters had all come through. The chairs were up on the, on the bar. And then we were like drinking our own, you know, that's was, for the really bad decisions. Oh, Those yeah. after hours decisions. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. I was never a shot person. I always stayed away from shots. I probably had a couple yeah. of bad experiences like whenever early college and i'm like never again i don't yeah. like the shot mentality that's just trouble for me yeah but i do wonder when i look back at like my college experience when it came to drinking and drugs that if it, like that like that sort of self-medication mm -hmm. thing of like i'm not comfortable but when i do this at least i'm confident like that yeah. sort of thing there has to be something yeah. in there that is also sometimes i think related just i don't know it's got to be related to the comedy or performance or acting community in general there are just too many fucking drunks and mm, addicts mm -hmm. and addicts yeah. for it not to be like some sort of like venn diagram overlap there of why this happens a lot yeah well we're all we're all like have such problems with like self-assurance yes. and right i mean yeah. probably why we became comedians was a it, like almost like a defense mechanism or yeah. also like here's here's how i'm special mm -hmm. right yes and this so, is when I get an affirmation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not from myself, but from strangers. <laughs> so I'm chasing like the, this. Under, right. That's the undercurrent of yeah. the comedy community is if I can get a laugh, then I'm still valid. Yeah. 
So, yeah. And if if the alcohol is an elixir and it like sort of gets you out of your own head and out of your own way for making those like gut hilarious decisions, Mm -hmm. you know, then it gets you closer to what you want. Yeah. Gives you access to that. It's also the similar like in the in the restaurant trade. It's another Mm -hmm. occupational hazard, the drinking, because if you do late night stuff. You can't just shut it down by going home like, I'm tired. You got to have a drink. Yeah. You got to like, because you've been down. busting it. You started your day at four if you're doing a restaurant shift and then you're shut, you know, you're closing out at 12 and everyone's like, should we get one? Like you just kind of, yeah. you're on a different rhythm. So you do need a little bit of something or a period of time to just maybe socialize, have a little social life and then crash. I don't yeah. know. I think there is also like a self-fulfilling thing that happens or a cyclical thing that happens if you like because when i remember when i was uh ultimately i stopped being a i stopped doing uh scenic carpentry and i became like a bar back and a bartender at a place that would stay open until four or five mm. we had that license it wasn't every single day but we could if we wanted to and after a little while you'd notice when you're working that late into the night and mm-hmm. you get home i mean i go i would ride my bike home and like you know, you shut the sun the, would be coming, and up. it would be six a.m. and yeah. I would be pulling my like, and Annie at that point, my wife was a school teacher, so like, oh, wow. I would be like showing up. She would be going to work, yeah. And I'd be like, I'm just home from work, drunk or not. I'm home from work. It's time for me to go to bed. While well, you're, the world is not set up for you. Yeah. Like the banks don't care about you. Yeah. And in a way, like you exist in a world that the rest of the world does not know about because. You're like, I have to set an alarm to make it to the bank before the bank closes. Right. And yeah. that puts you in a different world than everybody else, which yeah. then you are like, oh, this is where I live and this is who I am. I don't yeah. belong in that world. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, you are off rhythm or you're in a subculture. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Which I do is also think related to Dancing with the Stars, because I don't know, like the world does kind of operate on East Coast time. Like whenever I'm on yeah. the East Coast, like California, I mean, like with their the all elections at lunch, too. Yeah, the elections, elections are like, decided before California is done. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like they're all at lunch when we're just waking up. So like, why? What are they going to do? Wait around for us? Like we're on our own little island out mm-hmm, here. A mm-hmm. little bit. I have a question. Yeah. Oh. In the brilliant rewatch <laughs> that we rewatched and listened to, you noticed that brilliance, right, when you were watching it, Lennon. I'm She's sorry. checking um, something. No. What? Okay. okay. It's okay. We're yeah, not. We're not fishing I noticed for compliments. The re- that you guys were not using a recording studio. Well, you were on the road. Pete okay. was in New York, and we're I, judging by the sound, yeah. was recording from the yeah. inside of a submarine. Yeah, and I had like a megaphone voice. I can't even. I don't. I didn't enjoy my. Hey, what's up, Lennon? That's how I sounded like. <laughs> and your microphone was also backwards. I think. Yeah, that might have been part oh. of it. Yeah, but it, there was a meet the press. Uh, moment in the yeah. show and we talked about meet the press and press people so I was going to ask you Lennon first and Tim you can answer as yeah. well being that we through our careers have met the press and we have yeah. engagement with the press in your journey of press moments and red carpet moments what have you learned that you've gotten <laughs> better at in those moments in those engagements I, um, I mean okay like a couple like real r- real tip moments are when you do it with a publicist it's gonna be better yeah. like when you have a person that is trained to handle this it's gonna be better because I'm just like hi thank you for being here you know like <laughs> initially I've had so many moments on the red carpet that literally have been very awful <laughs> like, yeah well okay the first, the first one that uh, I went, Jenna Elfman invited me to go with her. I played her sister in my very first like sitcom. Mm-hmm. And she went to a women in film event that was being hosted by Melissa McCarthy. And it was like all of these illustrious women. It was such a big deal. And I wore uh, what looked like a bridesmaid's dress because I didn't have the right <laughs> outfit. And uh, it was literally from anthropology. I think it was not right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hit the red carpet and I didn't have a publicist and Jenna's publicist was helping her so she just like got one of the people there to help me Mm -hmm. and we went like you know they go through and they're like usually they you don't even hear about the people that don't want to talk to you because they're just like hey this they're going to talk to you now they're going to um but she i watched her as she went down the row and literally this is my first show I also have Best Friends Forever was in development and it was going to come out, but Mm -hmm. like nobody 
knew who I was. And so I watched her go from from reporter to reporter to reporter and not not one person wanted to talk to me and finally the last person wanted to talk to me because he was like a UCB nerd awesome. and he knew <laughs> he knew like he knew the world of improv and he wrote for like vulture or something before it was vulture and then i we got to the red carpet and the woman came forward and she was like um it's uh this is lemon parsnips <laughs> and i I was like, oh my God, she's been introducing me as lemon parsnips to all of these people. Not that it would matter at that point. Again, never having done it. Lennon Parham, who's that? that makes you know, more interesting in my mind. But I just like I just like looked at this like row of 20 photographers and I was like, my name's actually <laughs> Lennon Parham, and I'm gonna be on this show accidentally on purpose with Jenna Elfman. So you could take my picture if you want. <laughs> and then I just stood in my bridesmaid's dress and like it was just a nightmare. Has anybody, did anybody ever teach you to do that like over the shoulder thing? No, no, no. How yeah, what you, else? Have you What's ever your, done what, How have you honed your red carpet it's, technique? I mean, how do you know how I to behave I want you to now? look and you will see that it is a disaster from start to finish. <laughs> Still? You've gotten <laughs> the better, only time, No, the only time that I ever felt really good, and this was because it was at the GLAAD Awards, mm -hmm. this, okay, and I... I looked hot like I they they did my hair and makeup in a way and I had like a really low cut and a short and I just felt like again like wavy Dave from the sideline <laughs> like looking me up and down and I just like had that energy on there I've never looked better never okay. you were never never it. yeah maybe at the house premiere I looked okay there as well okay but the rest of the time it's like like a forced smile or like a weird like eye hmm. cock i don't know it's really weird lake bell did give me a clue she said and she's killing it on every red carpet yeah she said you keep your mouth closed okay <laughs> that's good for all life mm -hmm. and you think in your head um i have a secret oh and that like makes your face change or something that's good it brings the smile yeah oh good yeah. that's a great yeah. That's a oh, great I like that. The other, the other terrible red carpet experience that I had was we got invited to go to uh, Magic Mike XXL because Jessica and I, during our press, talked about Channing Tatum so much that everyone <laughs> thought we should go to that, that we really wanted to go to that. And um, I got there on time, and uh, Jess was 45 minutes late. Is that she, typical? No comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we and, can also cut that out. I'm not trying to create anything. I just like, I, when I no, hear something knows, interesting, I'll knows, dig into it. She knows. She um, knows. Anyway, yeah. she showed up and, uh, again, didn't have a publicist at this point. It was just the person from the USA Network. And they had written our names on the back of our ticket envelope and what looked like was serial killer handwriting. <laughs> now, if we had gone down the red carpet at the time we were supposed to be there, it would have been fine. OK, but instead we got sandwiched between Jada Pinkett Smith <laughs> and oh. Channing Tatum oh. and nobody wanted to talk to us, yeah. look at us, take a photo with us. Finally, we got to the end. And we we were like, I think we were interviewing with this really nice woman, Diane, that interviews us every time she sees us. And there was a gentleman next to her from People magazine. And while I was talking to her, he looked me dead in the eyes and then he pulled his fingers up to his temple and oh. pretended to shoot his brains out. <laughs> what does that mean? Is he bored or he's saying, I don't care about you? I, that was the vibe I got. Oof. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I feel like I could probably usually tell mm -hmm. what someone is giving off. And this guy hated us for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. And watch Magic Mike XXL. <laughs> <laughs> and how anyway. about in interviews and in press interviews? Is there anything you've learned through the years when you're doing promo or you're on the 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 circuit, let's say the publicity circuit for something? Is there anything you've evolved and gotten better at? Um, maybe just like the point, the talking points, and making it feel like it's the new thing that I'm saying in that moment, or like. That's what I've learned too. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. You, you can repeat yourself a lot. Like yeah, you don't have to create a brand new thing for each engagement. Uh uh. And maybe say less. Like a lot of times, I'm like, I want to explain, and then I'm like, well, I'll also say. And this, uh, but I also one thing I do like to do is say everybody's names, because the like, reporters. No, like 
the folks that I worked on oh, this, the project with and that I've always that makes me feel good and I hope that they, when they, if they hear a shout out then they feel good about oh, it as well you know that's good <clears throat> what T about you guys Tony has a good thing I mean I, I think it's the same like saying less and that on, I remember the first carpet <laughs> that I was ever on somebody would ask a question I'd be like oh man that's a really good question I want to give you a really good and thoughtful answer and you could just see them in their head being like I didn't ask a good question I don't want a thoughtful answer from you mm -hmm. I don't Tony I think this is like a sort of like joke a jokingly reductive way but like he has a good attitude about it where he's like nobody wants to hear what I have to say all he needs to say is what a fun night isn't everybody having such a great time? <laughs> yeah. He's like, they want to pull one thing yeah, out. Yeah. That's yeah. all. Like, it yeah. does not matter who, like, yeah. how you felt. It doesn't matter yeah. what happened to you in high yeah. school and how that informs now. Yeah. He's like, it's like, what a beautiful night. Like, <laughs> all the stars are out. <laughs> That's a good point. And I do think there is something to that about like not taking it so seriously and the sort yeah. of classic politician thing of they ask you a question that you don't want to answer. Yeah. You just answer a question that you asked yourself. Yeah. In that way of like, oh. you know what? Like, you know what? That's so funny. I thought you were going to ask me about this. And then you just answer that question. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I've learned the pocket. You put a hand in a pocket uh -oh. to create a bit of an angle. Yep. Oh, and I, good. Yeah. And I always try, like, even when I listen to this show, which is amazing, by the way. The oh, Rewatch God. podcast is amazing. My takeaway is always like, say less. Like, mm -hmm. I still am learning that. Mm -hmm. Like, you just benefit by saying less. And so, but I've gotten better at that. And I've gotten better at like hitting the talking points and not feeling obligated to like give them a new answer. Like, no. Yeah. You're just, yeah. Which is downstream from what Tony's saying. Like, nobody really cares. Just what a wonderful night. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, when you think about it, like, though, who's watching, like, like your press interviews, you know what I mean? Like, who's watching that? Like, yeah. I agree. Really... Yeah. Like the, all the red carpet stuff. Yeah. Honestly, I, a lot of times I'll shout out my mom and dad because I know they're going to watch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's pretty fun. Like, you that's know, sweet. I, you know what I mean? Like, it's like kind of fun if they get to see that. So anyway. The only thing I wish I was good at or like the baller moment is like when you're in the sea going down the red carpet. I feel like I'm always trying to like, look here, and, and I cater to that. Do you know what I mean? Like there's two people down low, they're like, look here, look here, look yeah. here, and I'm trying to like, so but I feel like Ball or like whatever, like if you're Clooney, he just gives them, I'm gonna look here, and then he steps, and then he goes, he doesn't, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I wish I had that ability to like. I guess if you've done it a ton of times, you would get, you get it, you get yeah. there, right? Well, what do you do? Do you just like, when you hit, because you go down to each X mark, you, I, you take a usually step. Usually I, try to have if i have my publicist with with me I, i'll just do it until they say okay okay you know and then okay, they take they'll you help to you. the next they'll yeah. take you out of that moment i think i've been unexposed in a few moments without my publicist that's or exposed i would be the word i'm never my publicist is here right now i'm never without them what? you married They're, your pub annie is your publicist Annie's my yeah publicist. you married your publicist she left the pr teaching profession yeah to be my to publicist. Be your publicist but the, the brand it, it backfired because after every interview she's like he fucking sucks right <laughs> she's like god yeah I, I have to fucking live with him wow. did you hear what he fucking said she like she's like <laughs> that's hard that's hard to go home to he got so defensive he does that at home. Mm -hmm. He's clearly wrong. I look at that with? guy in a tuxedo and all I see is a meathead on a bike coming home at 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. he, he's not fooling anyone, right? <laughs> you think that's an adult man? You think that's an adult man? Get the fuck out of here. Lennon, did you have a nugget? I saw you. I, I, okay. You guys, at some point we talked about the importance of silence. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? When that was, I don't remember when it was. In remember. our talk right now, no, or in the episode, in the, in the re, rewatch. in the re-listen re of the rewatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you guys com how comfortable are you with silence in general? I love it. You do. You have three kids. Do you get it? <laughs> I think I do. When? Um, in the morning, I'll go out and I'll feed the chickens. You have chickens. Oh, that's nice. yeah. I'll oh. get outside. Um, yeah. I'll go to the get. We have like a garage guest housey kind of mm. almost guest mm -hmm. house. I'll go out there, mm -hmm. and the car is a great place to get silence. Yeah, it might be interrupted by a great rewatch podcast mm -hmm. or something. But in general, <laughs> do you have an example of one? Uh, Second in command. If you haven't, that's a good one. Mm. Yeah, 
Uh, so those are the moments. And then if I'm on my game, it'll be nature. Like nature's the best. Like if you get if you get in nature and just where you a little, ga- where you do you game it up in nature? Um, I found a couple good hikes in Pasadena lately, Ooh. which I've been finding. Okay, uh, Husky of, turned me onto one. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of Pasadena. Yeah, and then the standards more like, of an Altadena guy, but yeah, you know, we can't. Yeah, yeah. Be. Yeah, I don't know if it's Altadena. It might be Altadena technically. If it was Altadena, you'd know. Okay, yeah. I guess I don't it's know. It's definitely, if you're on a hike in a mountain, it's definitely Altadena. It's Altadena. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. Is that your zip code roughly, that area? No, but... Do you want to give us your home address? <laughs> no, I didn't. I left it open and vague. But my parents live there and okay. my kids go to school there. So okay. Gorgeous. We yeah. love it. Beautiful we love it up there. up there. So that's my silence uh, moments mm-hmm. where I get my silence. What about you? I I do appreciate it. I find it hard. Like when you're on the road, like living in a hotel or whatever, like I kind of usually have the television on, mm. even if I'm not watching it, like whatever, just like a, you know, a child that has sports center on in the background. Right. Because I do like silence, but I kind of don't like it when I'm just like in the room. Like I usually will have like music on. I find it like when I, I like will play golf really early in the morning by myself sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I really like that, like being out in the oh, middle wow. of a field with just the sound. Like, you know, you usually end up getting paired up with people and you might say hello. But a lot of times you can kind of keep to yourself. And yeah, that's nice. I have as somebody who fills every moment with talking, I have noticed an actual advantage to to just shutting the fuck up recently Mm -hmm. in that like if somebody says something Mm -hmm. or like if you ask them a question Mm -hmm. and they're like i whatever you're at a store and they're like i can't do that and you just kind of stand there and look at them quietly yeah eventually they'll just Uh, be like they will start to fill it and they will fill it with like well i guess actually i could just do this other thing and you're like great that'd be awesome Mm -hmm. that i have sort of used my appreciation for silence to my own advantage am i a sociopath is that the no, no, I love it. Okay. What about you? What is your relationship with silence? And I'm, can you find it having a six-year-old and a 10-year-old? Yeah. It, during the pandemic, it was next to impossible oh, to fuck. have a silent moment. And yeah. I, both my husband and I are in, I don't know, we both like to be alone, separate from each mm-hmm. other, but also uh, like it just is so weird to be in that house and not ever be by yourself. Mm-hmm. And also we used to drive places and so we would have time to like, listen and sing to songs or you know podcast or whatever but during the podcast it was i mean during the podcast during the (laughs) the pandemic was like a long podcast in a way during the pandemic not a very well rated one though difficult (laughs) no would not be not not a 4.9 stars no way so during the pandemic it was hard to find that silence or yeah for and i felt like oh my god i i need i do need this so when i when i went to chicago last summer to to uh, direct somebody somewhere I was in a hotel room by myself for the first time like for extended time and it was it was wild yeah like all I'm responsible for is myself like watch what do I want to watch all of stranger things <laughs> okay <laughs> at three thirty or whatever great uh what do I want to eat dominoes <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't care you know what i mean it was just so it's just so i felt a little liberating would you get the phantom mamas while you were there Tell or or, or like uh, like when so our kids call us mama and papa mm-hmm. sometimes like even when they're not in the house i'll just hear like you'll hear it you'll hear like that mama oh or like the papa not a, about, not like, in this Hyatt house that I was in. Okay, <laughs> but no. I would imagine if I were in the house and they were not there, I would feel that okay. way. Like if they went off to camp or something, and I was in their in the house where we all live together, I would definitely think that. I a couple times over the pandemic, I had to do like I, twice. I had to do like the two week Canada quarantine things where you just have to stay in a hotel room. Oh God, never and had that. Yeah, it, well, I mean it's an it's an it's a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one thing that I did notice is going into it, and I'm going to ask you about your Hyatt House experience. Going into it, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be a different person in there. I'm going to read a book. I'm oh, gonna, yeah. I'm going to create something. How did you feel about yourself as a person in that room? When he, were you like, were you a good version of yourself in there? Not, not particularly. 
but also not a terrible person, but not the nor not what I usually am at all. Okay. I don't. And was it was it easy to transition into someone who could just be indulging in their own wishes? Like, did that switch go? Was it so recognizable, like when you were single in New York, or was did it take a bit of? transition to be in the Hyatt house and like I feel like I should be checking in or I feel like I should be planning her next camp for the summer you know yes, what I mean yeah. like was it were, were you there leaving, ghosts leaving your husband messages just like <laughs> <laughs> fuck you there was one night where they they went he he like got um you know I am like the keeper of all the things in the house so like mm-hmm. there I was like I don't know how this is going to go down because everybody asks me where things are at least 40 times a day yeah everybody so i was sure that i was going to get like some of those and i didn't get that many or as many as i thought and they kind of let me do my work which was great yeah i was really uh it was really hard for me to leave like the day that i left because i was like the long i was gonna miss i felt like i was gonna miss them and i had been literally the longest i think the longest i'd been away was five days before that Mm -hmm. so it was gonna be five weeks and i came back in the middle for like four days but it's also covid times and you just don't know like what's what are all the protocols and stuff so yeah i the day that i left i went and saw my daughter in into the woods she played Jack and I was sobbing. Oh, that's mm. a good, that's a good part. Were you sobbing because she both, got cast? Both, both. Yeah. She's, she, this is like, she's such a beautiful little performer and her voice is like straight from her heart. So mm. I would have been crying anyway, but also like, <laughs> you know, the innocence of childhood, it all goes so fast. And mm-hmm. then my husband and son came to see the second show and I had to say goodbye to her. And then I had to say goodbye to them and then drive back to the house to get my suitcase. Mm-hmm. And I would just like sobbed the whole way home. Oh. Sobbed the whole t- drive to the airport. Was pretty emotional in the airport. And then like once I got on the plane, I, d- I opened up my book, my script, and I started working and it mm-hmm. just was like, that was it. I just needed to feel the sadness and yeah. And then I was like, I have a purpose. This is important. I need to do this for myself and for others. Mm-hmm. And for the world at large, art is important. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's such... why we're doing this. Yeah, this it's art. the same. Yeah, it's the yeah. same. It's the same. No, it's such a luxury to get to be <laughs> focused on a project. It's such like a neat luxury yeah. to be. Yeah. Have you guys noticed, this is a little note that I had, I think based off of our hospice conversation Earlier, my my brother's oh. wife is a hospice chaplain. She went to like Quaker school to be a hospice chaplain. Wow! I just wanted to say that because I feel like it makes me look like a better person by knowing somebody that's by, that selfless. By mm-hmm. being in proximity. Yes. Mm-hmm. So like obviously some of not that, even by blood, right? No, no, no. Married yeah, married in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I feel like at, at like the. Parent... I do that with movies that make me seem smart. I'll just mention movies I haven't seen that make me seem socially aware and concerned and sensitive. But you haven't seen them? No, I do that all the time. <laughs> I don't consume any media. I I feel like I, I, adults at parties now I, are diagnosing people as narcissists the same way that everybody diagnosed people as Asperger's in 2008. Mm. Yes. That's the thing that's happening right now. I just feel like everywhere I go, somebody's like, that person's a narcissist. And I'm like, yeah, there are a lot of narcissists out there. Especially in Hollywood. Especially in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. But there, there aren't that many. There aren't like that many like confirmed narcissists. But I feel like it's a thing that we're getting to the point where the, that, and this is not, I don't bring this up because you mentioned the word, yeah. but it has been in my brain for the last couple months where I'm like, I feel like we're, the, the word is now losing meaning. Mm. Where like somebody just saying a pretty benign thing can now be interpreted as, mm. oh, well, that person's being such a narcissist about this. And it's like, no, that person was just like, I don't want to go do that because that's not something that I would enjoy. Do you think hospice workers are narcissists? I'm not sure where this is. Oh, no, I was saying that. Oh, no, we were talking about the oh God. They're always on and on about themselves. Oh, like, great. I help are. people transition 
from one plane to the other. Like, get the fuck. Yeah, and I made 10 hours of fucking premium cable every year. That's not easy. <laughs> that is not easy. Five hours. It's not easy. Five I guess hours. five hours. We made five, five hours. That's even harder and then, in its own way. And then four and a half that one year. Eight and then three ten. and a half. Eight to eight ten. ten. Final ten season. Half hour eight, episodes. Eight to ten half hour episodes. Yeah. And you're telling me that you helped fucking <laughs> transition an entire family no. through like the matriarchs. Passing. passing get the fuck out of here get over yeah. yourself yeah big deal i just it, the that thing about like the nar like it, the narcissism yeah. is only going to get worse like you're not going to have that big moment that i was just thinking about people have really been throwing around the term narcissist recently in the same way that over the last 5 6 years people have thrown around the word trauma to yep. the point where it feels it, like therapy language in general, yes. like a lot more people have yes. gone to therapy or watched a movie about it yep. or something. And they're like versed in their, you know, the yeah. vocabulary of therapy and yes. are using it potentially incorrectly and without going to therapy. And also in a way, sometimes it's like weaponized. Yeah. There's like a weaponization of that language. Right. Essentially against the like. That uh, that thing of just like oh well I I'm gonna anyway it's a weaponization weaponization of sure because you're making remember. something pathological when actually it could be within the realm of normalcy yeah what that behavior you, what did you do not want to do that somebody called you a narcissist oh no 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 it wasn't me it w uh, it wasn't are you sure me. that's a great question Larry. look <laughs> I'll ask it again in a second because we'll get <laughs> we'll get to it was it why do you feel defensive when Lennon asked you that question. I uh, because of your well, childhood because, drama. Uh, Lenin, Lenin was attacking me, <laughs> <laughs> and when I feel attacked, I put up walls, and that's not my fault. That is Lenin's fault. Okay. Lenin is the aggressor in this situation, and had, and frankly, has been the aggressor since this <laughs> podcast started. How dare you? I love the how. Yeah. I love dare it. you? Yeah. Uh, I got asked out by three different guys <laughs> in one week. <laughs> Uh, I, Ask, was gonna, I was going to say. Here's one more topic because we're. Oh, we're wait, you're let Lennon go. No, I know, I know, I no, know. I'm saying I want the one more topic, but I just think that I'm. Gonna, this will be the last one. Uh, but I want your topic see, for sure. See if because it ties into what we were just talking great, about, great. which is that I feel like my ability to do Hollywood small talk at, or bits like mm -hmm. sweet little like green room bits, I has changed since the pandemic and i wonder if you guys have felt this because i went like i used to fucking love just like a like a bit riff yeah, yeah like you reminded me of a bit on veep by the way last time you were here yeah, I'm like, oh yeah. thank you for remembering because i have a fondness now for that but yeah anyways. well we're, like you're backstage or you're at a party or whatever and then you're just like there's no stakes you do something dumb and then you get to call it back all night or you just have a moment but i went to a pro, like I guess it was like the first time I had been to a big like big like everybody that we know was there mm -hmm. you guys were probably there and uh I'm probably we're in demand well you're probably we're probably in the thing it was the um, <laughs> history of the world oh my god that was I was not there okay but so there were there yeah were that seems like everyone we so know was there many yeah, yeah. people there and 100%. there were people who were in charge that made it that that I'm like personally connected to and then also just like all these people that I haven't I literally had not seen in years much less done bits with and I found myself not in like not able to do bits like I would we would we would start we would look at each other and then it would be like I can't do bits man I gotta talk about how hard this shit is yeah. and we would like immediately go deep on some like personal thing that we were both going through i found myself in conversations with people that i did not know like hannah einbinders plus one oh. i was like into deep. it with, got deep with her <laughs> yes. wow yeah. i mean it was yeah. just like wild i saw you at the bar i think i came over and said hi yeah yeah, yeah. and as somebody else i was talking about whether or not she was going to have a baby like we just like got into it and ev with every person and I was like I felt exhausted at the end of the evening but it felt I wasn't sure if it felt better or worse than going to one of those events and having just like kind of silly goof goof yeah. off you know what I mean because sometimes I I'll, I'll do that and then like have one conversation that's deep like at the end or something but this was like 
I just felt like, like you, I, I you, couldn't. You weren't in the mood for it, or you weren't. Yeah, maybe it was able just that to sustain night. it. And there's something great about real connection. I, I feel like yeah. part of maturity, at least for me, having kids or you know a good relationship, you know, with Morgan or whatever. I've learned to be somehow better, more human, hopefully. Yeah. And I think having real connection is an evolution that's good. Not that like. You should. Hey, I don't want to stop the bit, man. I want. I want to get really. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, can't yeah. be that guy. Yeah, but yeah. if you yeah. if you're sort of suffering in the bit moment and and somebody sees it or you're just like, uh huh, that's funny. I'm sorry. I'm just in a thing or I don't know. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's my narcissism. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I'd rather. That's what I wrote down. Okay. I had a little tally going. Apparently, I'm going to check my notes again. Lennon did in fact have three correct answers during the spelling test, and I yes. had one. I just wanted to double you check that. You might have hit two. And then two. I also, you hit two. You I also two. had five uh, moments where you were a narcissist. But we'll, we'll unpack those. I, <laughs> I, uh, I completely understand what you're saying. That party specifically. Yeah. There, that was, oh, what if every single person that you ever known <laughs> had heard except of, for Matt Walsh. except for Matt Walsh, was there and they were all in one room. Yeah. It was, it was, it was overwhelming. Yeah. It was yeah. overwhelming. It sounds overwhelming. And like one woman thought I was somebody else and got so excited that, <laughs> to see me and then, and said, and asked me how somebody that I didn't know was. And then I said, I don't know that person. Like I tried to meet her. Yeah. Like I don't, I, oh my gosh, I don't know that person. Yeah. Who's that? They sound awesome. And then she was like, well, what about, no, you know them, you know? And then I was like, ah, and I was like, I'm, and then I introduced myself to her and then she realized she was talking to the wrong person. Person, like everybody was there. Everybody was in the struggle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so weird. Yeah. And, but I came home feeling like, am I broken? Like, I can't, oh, like, yeah. I can't do, like, I can't do these, you know, b that, that kind of like party anymore. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a, I'm You're not rusty. a psychologist. Yeah. I'm sort of like a bussy doctor. Mm -hmm. But as a doctor, <laughs> God, I can, I can <laughs> say, get your shingle out there. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Simon, Dr. Bussy Simon's specialist. Bussy specialist. Hold on. <laughs> God damn, I found one. I've been looking all over For the town. uninsured. <laughs> $20, I'll look at y'all's bussy. Uh, Can I ask one quick question? Yeah. I know you said it was our last topic. Well, I, no, I just I wanted to, to say that you're not broken. You're doing great. No. Yeah. You're doing great. I, I would agree with that assessment. Is there. Thanks, guys. This is a quick t a question for Lennon, let's just say. Mm -hmm. You have a boy and a girl, right? Yeah. Is there something easy about raising a boy and something difficult about a raising boy? Equally, is there something easy about raising a girl and something difficult? These I'm pulling stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not true for every child. And I could speak to it, too. But I figured somehow in the mother conversation, and because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think mothers have a lot more stress similarly in our house mm -hmm. morgan is like morgan where's my thing where's the th everyone's yeah. like mom 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 a yeah. little at least in our home as well yeah so i could see you unplugging and having difficulty unplugging yeah so off of that somehow i thought boy girl raising is there like a hot easy hot difficult or hot challenge i wouldn't say difficult because that seems negative but yeah that you would come away with i probably they are on some level, like stereotypically, like boy versus girl, I'm sure. Like Soraya, uh, my daughter, um, wasn't uh, like she, the way she pushes my buttons is very different than the way my son pushes my buttons. So he takes up a lot of space. And I think that challenges my own like deal with like how big to be in the world. Like, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that may I have permission to kind of like take up this space he doesn't ever ask for permission and does things that we say say to him don't do that and then he looks us dead in the eye and then does it and i'm like <laughs> you know soraya uh, is the opposite she has um she has a lot of um stuff around rules and like um she always wants to follow the rules and if the rules change halfway through it's like the world has ended oh, you know right. that also comes from me and challenges my own you know what i mean yeah. like they're 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 kind of um they have these like reverse mirror images of some of the stuff that i am working on yeah mm -hmm. yeah and like for instance i i don't think i ever learned how to 
be healthily angry. <laughs> like, you know, like I, I didn't like, I don't like people fighting. I like try to stop them. And I'm like, no, this would be really good if they leave this household knowing it's okay to have a fight. Yeah. Here's how you do it successfully and mm-hmm. healthily and respectfully. And then they can take that into their other relationships. I, I, I didn't, I never wanted to fight with anybody. And I thought if we fought, it was over. Like yeah. our relationship was over. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. So I remember I was pregnant with Kai and I was doing reshoots of the house. And, um, Will Farrell said to me, is that, what are you having? And I said, a boy. And he said, and you have a girl already. And I said, yeah. And he goes, okay, there's nothing wrong with him. Okay. <laughs> when he comes out, <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna do the stupidest shit you've ever seen in your life. Just know it's just cause he's a boy. There's nothing wrong with him. And, and you know, Kai, Kai pushes those boundaries for sure. That's funny. There that is, is a, how old is Kai? He's six. There is something that I was not prepared for, which is like the sort of like six to now getting into 11 year old, the chaos, even though I had it myself as a six to 11 year old boy, I know I did this, the chaos of what they want when they're together of like, we want to push one another. We want to fall over. Mm. The most fun I've ever had is when we were in a pile and every was getting kicked. I was like, this is fucking chaos. Yeah. And I don't, of course I don't know if that's true for everyone, but like that is, that shit is tough. And it is like, Oh, this is the stupidest animal I've ever seen. Yeah. This isn't, a Coco the gorilla, for example. <laughs> I don't know if that's a recent enough reference for anybody in the room. It's a callback in the episode, so it works. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you great so much back. for that full throated endorsement. I just want to say that was our last topic. Tim. Yeah. I just want to say that I called the last topic. Oh, you called it? I get to call the last topic. Okay. So cool. I think we're done. Well, I guess just so. so I'll just know. put another little tally mark there under narcissistic <laughs> Walsh moves. Is there anything that you would like to walk back or double oh. down on? No, I just want to remind everyone that I spelled three words correctly, (laughs) and they were the very only three words that I got. They were double down. And they were also hard words. They were hard. They were hard words, and then Tim only got one. If you were an actor, writer, director, is there a career or profession that you could see yourself possibly enjoying and being pretty good at? I think I would be maybe a midwife. Oh, delivering Ooh, that's children. A, yeah. Wow. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'll introduce you to my fucking sister-in-law. You guys Maybe can talk about how great. Maybe a Yeah, you're going to be bringing hospice babies worker. into the world, and she's going to be shut, shuttling yeah. them off the fucking yeah. coil, and you guys will talk about how great you are with families. You know what's yeah. funny? I think hospice workers are angels. I don't assume midwives are angels, oh. and I don't know why. I'd probably assume they're into crystals and like all that mm. shit. You're like False medicine. Yeah, false medicine, basically. <laughs> great. Real quick. I'm sorry. Last topic. You don't topic. get to call last the last topic. topic. No. I just <laughs> called it. It's over. I have How? to go. You need, no, you no, can't. No, stay so we don't fight. Damn it. How many members of Congress, no. and this Who includes this the House and the Senate, how many members of Congress do you think you could beat up? Beat up? Yeah, like physically, physically beat up. Yeah. Not because you agree or disagree with them, just like physically, raw, physical. What do you mean, like physical. in a row, though? Because I, I don't know if I'd have the like stamina No, to... no, 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 not in a row. Just based on whether or not I would win? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 435 members of uh, the, house. the House, 100 in the Senate, so 535 people. A total? Yeah. Oh. Or just a percentage. Yeah, or a percentage. Or you can pass on the question. I mean, I didn't we don't give you that. <laughs> All right, then you got to answer option. it. Yeah. Um, just pick a number. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I've never physically fought anyone. Um. Maybe I could just go up against them in a spelling competition and. It's a good answer. I don't know. 73. 70. I could definitely see you beating 73% <laughs> of them in a spelling competition. I mean, you know what? I didn't say she couldn't move, move the guidelines. <laughs> you might want to rethink that question. I mean, I, I don't know. No, I'm not going to rethink anything. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, Lennon, Lennon, you're the Martin. best. Thank, you're thank you for you're taking sweet. the time. <laughs> you're the best. Um, you can find us wherever you get podcasts. Um, rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, preferably five out of five stars. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, you can go to the website and add your little name and location to the map to let you know where you're listening from. Matt mm-hmm. likes that. I do love that. And also... That's it, guys. Thank you so much. Peace.